live. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming to this event. This is our last event of the year. Uh, we would like to thank all our sponsors this year uh, to, uh, for the amazing help and support that we have had uh, all over the Latin American the Spotlight series. And today we are finishing up with Uruguay and Argentina and the Spotlight. And we have a special, uh, you know, part of the event today. And we have uh, eight startups that are pitching uh, for, uh, you know, um, this is a sales pitch. is the last part of the phase two for, for these startups. So you guys that are now uh, listening us uh, in this event are going to see four pitches now. Then I'm going to present a white paper, uh, very short, and then we have another four pitch, and then we are going to have our conversation with our speakers. So I hope that you enjoy the whole uh, event and help us to decide who is going to be the best pitch uh, of the event, who has the best pitch of the event. So I'm going to ask the first uh, person to come. Uh, the name is Ahmed uh, from Copri Coprino. So I'm adding Ahmed here. He's joining us just in a second. There we go. Ahmed, uh, thank you so much for being here. If you can, please uh, share your audio and video, uh, you know, like your presentation. You can start anytime. I think Ahmed has probably some difficulties uh, right now to enter. Um, Hold on one second. If no, um, Ahmed, I'm going to return to you once you, or it seems like it's working now, Ahmed. Your yeah, internet, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but your internet is very slow. Uh, Ahmed, I'm going to add you later on. I'm going to ask Amir to come up uh, with your pitch. And then, uh, you know, we will finish uh, with you at the end of this round. Amir? Good morning. Am I audible, Amirim? Yeah. Hi, Amir. So you can go ahead and start your pitch. Thank you so much for being here. Um, am I audible, Miriam? Yeah? Yes. Just show me thumbs up if you can hear me. Perfect, good, thank you. you. So let me yeah. share my screen now. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, guys, good morning. And um, my name is Emir and I'm from Ring, Trust, uh, Ring Marketing. I'm a CEO of this company. We offer marketing services that works for home services companies. So before the end of this presentation, uh, I, well, the one thing I would like you to take away from this presentation is that we monetize leads and calls. So the problem we are solving in the market is for the home services contractors, that these home services contractors having an expensive lead acquisition problem, even though if they acquired lead, um, these leads are low in 10, and most of these home services contractors don't have a marketing expertise. So what we do, we deliver real results, not promises, and we connect high intent and ready to buy customers with these home services contractors. And our business model is purely vapor performance and it's a result driven business model. So who we are, we founded in 2019 in the United Arab Emirates with our whole 100% clients in the US. Our business model is paper call, paper lead. We do have a solution in-house for lead management platform, which we have building. And um, we have a cloud call center for 100 seat and call center agents. And we do our own self-media buying. And for this Canadian venture, our target market is Ontario because we are legally incorporated into Ontario. So our verticals, we are pretty much in the home services industry, such as electrician, plumbing, HVAC, roofing, and so on and so forth. And the sizable order, uh, addressable market is $56.3 billion worth of uh, market. And as we know, the home owners are getting in and you know bigger and bigger market, and all of these home owners need a lot of services as well. 
So our business and unique business proposition is we offer clients 50 free leads. So there is no string attached. They can test our leads, the quality we are generating. And at the same time, we give one month free service. The pay as you go, there is no commitment attached. All leads what we generate is from certain social ads. And because we generate this data, we own this data and we cross sell this data to the other businesses as well. So we generate compliant leads as per the Canadian regulation. For example, we have our lead magnet website and we have a lot of traffic sources, search, social display, email, native. And from all of these sources, we drive traffic to our website and we generate compliant leads. Our marketing funnel is very simple. We generate uh, leads from certain social ads. From there, we do the lead generation. And since we own this data over the lifetime of the lead, we all monetize this lead. We do outbound calls and inbound calls. We do email, we do SMS. So like omni-channel marketing gives us a cutting edge advantage. The inbound call generation, for example, a customer sees a message, SMS, or they see an ad. From there, they make a click to call. And from there, the caller get connected um, to the, the contractors. And that's how we make money. If we get a lead on our website, our agent call this particular lead. And from there, it's connected with the customer. And then we qualify this lead. And then we connect it to the contractor. And that's the way how we make money. We have developed an in-house lead management platform that pretty much automate 80% of our life. And our competition is huge in the Canadian market. However, in marketing business, the, the competition is a blessing because that where we can broker our, our traffic with other competitors as well. Our achievements so far in the two years of the business, we have generated 300,000 compliant leads in the U.S. market. We have generated over 52,000 calls to our clients in the U.S. And for the gross revenue for ring marketing is $255,000 um, U.S. for the U.S. market. And for our clients, approximately we have generated about a, uh, near to a million dollar worth of revenue. Financial projection wise, we are anticipating to hit $10 million in the next five year. And we have been recognized internationally. We have been nominated as the best marketing agency for the year 2021 in the Affiliate Grand Summit in Dubai in early last, last May this year. Founder-wise, um, we are having a co-founder from multiple expertise from um, I'm, myself, um, and Daniel Enver Sabder. We have a combined marketing experience. And thank you very much for your time. And I offer you a 30 minutes free marketing consultation for your business so I can help you grow your business to the next level. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Amir. That was a great presentation. That was Amir from uh, at Ring Marketing. Now I'm going to ask Arab uh, to come to uh, you know the uh, um, the plate. Now she, he can start his presentation. This company is Conart Pro. Hold on one second. He's just entering. Hi, Hi Arab. Hi. You can start any time, OK? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Gaurav, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Kwanak Pro, a time for managing remote teams. In 2011, I started my first software development company with my partner, Amit. But once our team size crossed 100, we found it very difficult to manage our remote team members. And that brings me to our problem. Early billing. Early billing is the preferred business model in software development projects, and tracking billable hours is important. Now, the North American businesses outsource a lot of software development work, but generally find it hard to track project progress. On the other hand, the software development company owners have their own set of problems. Distributing work equally is a challenge, resulting in overworked or underutilized team members. Generating timesheets and invoices takes days, resulting in delayed collection of payments. At present, they hold daily status update meetings where team members share verbal updates and timesheets are being maintained using spreadsheets. We offer a SaaS-based time tracking platform that, that provides transparency to clients and helps software development companies in effectively managing their teams. The desktop app helps remote team members in tracking their time easily and keeps them focused. The web app shows real-time activity to all stakeholders and also helps in generating accurate timesheets and invoices. It integrates well with all major project management tools. There are roughly 26 million software developers in the world, and one third of them work in the outsourcing industry, out of which four and a half billion are in India alone. This gives us a total addressable market of six and a half billion dollars. We have pricing, we have pricing plans for teams of all sizes and collaboration needs, and all our plans come with all premium features for first 30 days. 
A go-to-market strategy consists of various organic and inorganic activities, such as doing content-based marketing, publishing case studies of the success stories using Google AdWords and hosting virtual events webinar series. What sets us apart from our major competitors is our focus on niche customer segment. We have been testing our product with hundreds of users uh, and we'll move them to paid plans starting January 2022. With a go-to-market strategy, we expect to grow at a healthy pace every month. Our team consists of software engineers, digital marketing experts, and designers who are passionate about remote work. If you need help with managing remote time, remote teams, tracking time, or monitoring project progress, please come and talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kara, for that. And guys, for those that are looking at these presentations, we are just finishing here with some pitch uh, sessions. You can help us to figure out who has the best pitch of the event. And now I'm going to continue with Sara. Uh, she is from Abitomic. After this, it will be one more pitch, and I will be presenting the white paper. Sara, welcome. Uh, you can start uh, sharing your presentation. Thank you so much. Am I audible? Yeah. I'm going to present the presentation. Please let me know whenever you have it. All good. You can see my presentation. All good. OK. Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah, co-founder of Habitomic. Habitomic is a habit-forming app for people who want more out of life. Most everyone wants to make some kind of change, eat healthier, lose weight, exercise more, reduce stress, or get better sleep. We all want to be more productive, but there is a painful gap between what people want and what they actually do. However, 81% fail to stick to a new habit, but it is not you. Don't blame yourself. The problem is you are not thoroughly engaged with what you want to develop, or you are impatiently in such a hurry that will internalize failure and then give up. With Habitomic, setting the right goals and creating positive change can become much easier. The true story of Yassi, she is one of our users. She wanted to wake up early every day. She's, she uses several apps to help her, but after a while, she was totally disappointed and confused. Habitomic was introduced to her. After some psychological tests and habit validation process, she realized that waking up early wasn't really her need. She wanted to manage her time to increase her productivity through the, throughout the day. So she started preparing prioritized to-do lists every day, and then step-by-step, step, she reached her goal. Our psychology and technology teams have worked together to provide a specific test. Using AI and machine learning help us ensure that the habit fits your personality and cover your needs. We offer a unique personalized plan and ultimately recommend user next step to choose Atomic Habit. We, we accompany user throughout this journey like a personal assistant to make sure everything goes well. Habitomic total addressable market is 1.2 million user in B2B and 30 small businesses for B2B until the fifth years. People spend 11 billion worldwide in a year on the personal development apps and digital platform. North American people spend $4 million and Habitomic, will share, Habitomic share will be approximately $15 million within five years. Our business model on B2C is subscription-based premium with a variety of choice for more features. And obviously our B2B model is licensed for small businesses. We have categorized our competitor in aspects of technology and personalized plan, science of psychology, AI and machine learning technology, and atomic habit are our value proposition and make us pioneer in this market. Innovation and teamwork are our point of emphasis. We have done our best to come up with an all encompassing plan to ensure the satisfaction of our user. Here is our past, current and upcoming achievement that propel us forward. And now, don't judge yourself. Now start your journey with us and enjoy every step along the way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, now uh, we are going to finish up these uh, pitch sessions with Hamed. Uh, we are going to continue with this. And guys, if you are in the uh, audience, Please uh, help us to, uh, you know, to know who has the best speech of the day. So 
we are going to have another four startups after the white paper and hopefully uh, you guys are going to see um, you know all the startups today so I'm not sure Hamed can you please try to share again your audio and video perfect there is working now it's working yeah <laughs> now again yeah and now it's working sorry for interruption yeah um, you can try to share your uh, audio and yeah. video yeah, perfect sorry your presentation yeah can you hear me yeah Perfect. And the presentation is ready as well. Shall I start? Yeah. You can go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Hamed, the co-founder of Cropino, and we are here to make farming more profitable and sustainable with the power of satellite and AI technology. Did you know up to 40% of the global crop yield are lost every year due to pests and disease and soil erosion and most of the time, extreme weather conditions. While some of it can be blamed on non-desirable climatic conditions, but climate alone cannot explain it all. Most of the time, is inefficient use of fertilizers uh, regarding to timing, place, source, and the rate are the main factor. Even in North America, which has one of the most mature agriculture industries, Farmers are struggling with these issues as well as all other farmers around the world. They always like to maximize their yield and save costs and be more profitable. Precision agriculture. Is the method of farming. Uh, that uses real time light image updating in three to five days to AI enabled recommender systems. Here is a product demo no need for software download and no prepayment. With just a few simple clicks, farmers can find their farm on the map and start using the software. Working closely on more than a thousand farms in different climates, proven that. Farmers can gain up to 35% and 20% uh, cost saving if they put the right techniques in place. And here is a success story of one of our clients who uh, our product helped him with early detection of farm problems and damage and reach 25% increase in his yield. Just in North America alone, there are around 200 million hectares of farm that can benefit from some sort of our precision agriculture system and um, almost the same for South and Latin America. We have targeted three main crops grown in Canada, including wheat, corn, and canola, which are the highest valued crops in North America. Premium subscription is our business model on web and mobile app based on three packages in exchange of just one or two dollars per month. We know we are not alone in this market and uh, some of our competitors provide similar services as we provide. But we believe that we have some key differentiators like uh, AI-based recommender system with less equipment needed. Also, we have positioned ourselves in small to medium farmers. The team behind our stories consists of a super motivated and experienced satellite expert, agriculture engineer and software and AI engineers. Uh, and we are not doing this just for business. We do really care about sustainable development goals. We are more than happy to propose a two months free subscription for anyone in this event to make more success stories together. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Ahmed. And that was our, uh, you know, four companies uh, pitching, uh, you know, to be the best pitch of the event. So I'd like to, uh, for all of you, please uh, go ahead and try to, uh, you know, start looking at who will be that a company. We are still have another four uh, to enter into this pitch. Uh, but in the meantime, while you are deciding and you are looking at all this uh, information, I just want to, uh, you know, start with what is the white paper today. So, uh, you know, you all come here because it's Argentina and Uruguay in the spotlight. And I really would like to thank you for uh, being here today for this last white paper. If you are looking for information of this white paper, it's in our website already. Uh, so you can go to our website, white papers, and you can download uh, free this white paper. So 
For the, uh, the agenda for this white paper, you will have uh, you know, general aspects, startup ecosystems, um, key uh, tech sectors and conclusions. And then you know, after uh, we have another round of pitch, we are going to be speaking with our speakers, uh, which are leaders in the startup ecosystem in Argentina and Uruguay, so we can have a good conversation with them. Uh, so some of the general aspects that you may like to uh, know and why we put together Argentina and Uruguay is because they are neighbors and they work uh, really well, uh, you know, besides that, you know, they have big differences, as you can see here. For example, Argentina, uh, you know, is, is one of the largest countries in the world, uh, you know, eighth largest country in, 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 the, re in, in the world. Uh, with 53% uh, in, in land. So in, in compare, you know, Uruguay is a small country, it's the second smallest country in Latin America. And it, that also reflects the number of the populations. For example, in Argentina, you have 45 million people. In Uruguay, you have 3.5 million people. Uh, in terms of English, uh, you will see that both countries are doing really well. Like Argentina, for example, is top in the region uh, with best uh, people with English skills. And Uruguay is eighth in the region with best English skills. I personally was, you know, able to live there. So I know how, uh, you know, good level of English they can have. Um, now, in terms of inflation rate, some of the general aspects that you're going to see, for example, in Argentina, is, is super high right now. It's 52, uh, 50 percent, while in Uruguay is more like a stable uh, 7.89 percent by uh, October uh, of this year. Um, so, again, the reason why, you know, Argentina and Uruguay were presenting both together is because those countries work very well. So. While Argentina is a great country for many com many companies to go there and actually accessing clients, accessing population, Uruguay represents basically a financial paradise in somehow uh, you know in Latin America, and they have very very uh, flexible uh, in you know rules and laws around, so you can move uh, faster uh, you know sometimes accessing to the Argentinian market or even the Brazilian market sometimes. Now, other aspects uh, in key sectors, and um, I'm going to start with uh, Argentina in particular. Uh, Argentina has been very good always in uh, um, things like fintech. Uh, has been very well known for most of the, uh, the time that Argentina has an amazing uh, fintech sector. Uh, they do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, good uh, startups with cryptocurrency and things related with Bitcoin. They were one of the best, uh, one of the uh, first countries adopting uh, um, Bitcoin. So it's also important to know that, you know, Argentina's startup ecosystem is a regional leader in innovation. Um, they rank uh, 39 in the global uh, market uh, in, in South America, certainly. Uh, they are good. They are like they rank a third uh, in the world for uh, their, uh, you know, ranking in a best uh, type of ecosystem that they have. Uh, Argentina is also an ideal place to locate a fintech, e-commerce, retail and energy and environmental start startups. As the most popular industries in the country, there is a, a sample of uh, 180 fintech uh, retail startups in Argentina. 55 energy and uh, environmental uh, startups uh, in the country as well. So in fintech, they are number 23 worldwide, e-commerce and retail number 26, and energy and environment number 26 also. Now, it's important also for you to know that Argentina owns uh, several of, uh, you know, the unicorns that we have in the region. So they have at least four of unicorns that I know in particular that are located or they they are a part of this uh, startup ecosystem. Um, Buenos Aires for sure is one of the uh, cities that you know attracts most of the international uh, market and uh, also international startups because of the type of ecosystem that they have. Now, in regards of Uruguay, Uruguay is an ideal uh, location to innovate and test new technologies because of the qualities of a small, orderly, open, and transparent country uh, with access to superior uh, technology. Uruguay ecosystem is a regional leader and rank uh, 51 globally, 
But it's worth it to remember in 2014, they were ranked like the most innovative uh, ecosystem in the world. You know, at the time, they were doing a lot of amazing things and they, they continue doing amazing things in the region. Uh, Uruguay also become first a per capita software exporter in South America, and as a result, is an um, of its early um, internationalization. So you also see that Uruguay has a you know a ranking in the world, 27 uh, worldwide in fintech, uh, 50 e-commerce, and 65 software and data. Uh, you will see also that there are at least one unicorn that came from Uruguay. Uruguay has a different type of, uh, you know, supporters locally for international startups that are also looking to maybe expand business in there. Uh, it's important to highlight the Projecta Uruguay Acceleration Initiative, for example, which aims to attract international creative business with the potential to expand and scale globally. And is being reused in Uruguay National Agency for Research and Innovation, ANI. Uh, workshops, uh, you know, are provided to select companies and they will be eligible up to $70,000 non-refundable funding, which is, uh, you know, pretty similar to the initiative that you sometimes see uh, from, uh, you know, is that actually, oops, I forgot to change it for Uruguay here. So some conclusions, guys, because you are going to see all the data, uh, you know, uh, in our in our white paper and what I'm doing here is basically a highlight of the two ecosystem. Why it's important that you see these two ecosystem is that you know Argentina and Uruguay are extremely good countries uh, to uh, you know start business in technology. Um, and as a conclusion, I would like to say that you know Argentina has a booming fintech industry. Again, over 300 companies uh, you know are a part of this industry. 20% of all Argentine fintech companies, for example, are currently in operation, were funded uh, just last year. Uh, between um, uh, 2017 and 2020, uh, direct employment in fintech sector grew uh, you know, at 40%. So it's a great uh, startup ecosystem for fintech. It's a great ecosystem also uh, for uh, you know, e-commerce and uh, for agricultural technology. Uh, we also, uh, you know, like as a conclusion, highlight that Uruguay is a world-class center with significant technology and ad advances. Uh, so the country has excellent internet connectivity. Uh, you know, they have a lot of potential um, as as well as a, as an ecosystem. They they call themselves also the Silicon Valley of the uh, South America, you know, but they have a really, really rich uh, connections and very good companies around. And also, you know, one of the organizations that works uh, with several investors in uh, in the region and that's called Escala. That's very similar for those that are here in Canada to NACOM. So being said that, uh, you know, same as the other uh, events, when we talk about, uh, you know, the final conclusions of the um, of the white papers is that in terms of um, uh, whatever takes, <clears throat> sorry, for, uh, for, um, for what it takes uh, in regards of, uh, you know, having business in, in the, uh, in the Canadian, um, in the Canadian, for the Canadian startup, uh, you know, coming to Uruguay or Argentina, you just have to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, sorry, my computer here is, is not working the best. Um, I'm trying to uh, minimize here. Um, sorry about that. But I just wanted to uh, highlight that the conclusion at the end is that you will have an amazing, uh, you know, type of ecosystem in all uh, in all uh, types of uh, you know uh, matters in the ecosystem in Argentina and Uruguay, and we are going to be talking about that with our speakers. Sorry about that part uh, at the end of the presentation, but it was just a, a mix here in my computer. So, guys, uh, we are going to have our last uh, you know pitch of the day. So, we are going to have uh, B, uh, by Infotech, Acorn, Balino, and Pocket Clinic. So I'm going to ask, uh, you know, Varun, uh, Sayed, uh, yeah, guys, to, to please start um, sharing your audio and video. Varun, you are going to go next. So i um, adding you, Varun, you are going first by Infotech. 
Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> so Go you ahead. can uh, share your presentation, please. Sure. I'll do that right away. Perfect. We can see it. You can start. OK. Hi, all. This is BI Infotech. We work on business intelligence solutions that are powered by AI and machine learning. The key challenge in MR is when you have several agencies in the field who are capturing data for you uh, in their systems across a variety of platform. For example, in one case, our client wanted help with uh, managing 4,000 plus interviewers across 26 cities and five different vendors. The key concerns where are they interviewing in the right place at the right time? How is the quality of the data being captured? Projects being given to different vendors had to be re reconciled to a central system. To overcome this, we have developed a B2B app called FSMS, which is also available in the Google Play Store. You don't even need to worry about getting your software over to your vendors. This solution helps recording check-ins, asset geo-tracking, and project management. You can easily configure multiple vendors, assign tasks, and it is all managed from the central dashboard. We have tried and tested this in India with uh, around 4,000 plus users over uh, the last three years. It has features like artificial intelligence, machine learning, geofencing. It's highly customizable, can fit into any environment and uh, a central dashboard gives you all the information you need in real-time basis. The size of the market globally for market research industries is 70 plus billion dollars and it's growing at the rate of 10 percent per year on year. Our financial planning for the first year is to just reach 2,000 users in North America and we have projected a conservative growth rate of 20 percent year on year. In comparison with our competitors, we provide a survey creation tool, a fast table generator, a live reporting dashboard, a resource management module, integration with Salesforce, etc. Uh, the data is captured in a secure cloud-based database and it works offline too. Our team is Rupender Singh Bedi, who is the founder of BI Infotech. He has 21 plus years of experience in market research and technology, supported by me, Varun Singh, uh, with 20 plus years in market research and offshore development. Our key clients are Kantar, Nielsen, Toluna, and so on. We are also registered with some key organizations like Market Research Society of India. Uh, we are certified by ISO 27001 for data security and ISO 9001 for quality. In our client's words, Cantor says uh, BI Infotech is a team of interactive, consultative, and thorough individuals. Nielsen says BI Infotech is competitive, flexible, and a dedicated team of technical experts. BI Infotech has been rated as the best company to work for in 2019-2020 by uh, Business Connect, which is an independent organization. They call us the harbingers of the future. We are offering a free 21-day trial and a free one-time custom setup, which includes understanding your organization, setting up users, brand logos, etc. We are here in Canada to create your fieldwork automation story. We are ready to start your free trial today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Varun, for that presentation. So we are going to continue with Timothy. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being here. There we go. Timothy, hi. You can hi, start hi, you today. Today. All good. All good. OK. Can you see my screen? Not yet. You need to uh, um, present your presentation. Can you see it now? It's getting there, yes. You can, you can go see my ahead. Now. Yes, yes. Okay. Go ahead, Timothy. Yeah, my name is Timothy Ojo from Valino Systems. Valino Systems is an easy to use cloud based venture management software that helps retailers improve cash flow and increase their profits. Many retail businesses are closing due to poor cash flow management, lack of inventory buffer, and inability to quickly change, to change their consumer demands. 
Our solution to that is by applying machine learning to consumption trend, Valeno is able to recommend products that retailers need to buy, when to buy them, and at what quantity those products should be purchased. What this does is that it improves cash flow by making sure retailers only spend money on what their customers would buy. The opportunity, the, the total opportunity for us, which is the total addressable market in the North American market is about 1.2 million. Our service addressable market is 202,000. Why we are grosser and Oka. The benefits. We improve an average retailer's cash flow by as much as 6% and gross profit by up to 5%. We reduce the time spent on ordering and fulfillment by up to 20%. How does the system work? We work by directly integrating with retailers, currently point of sale system, using our API. The API links the point of sale systems to suppliers and then to manufacturers. Our business model, we are offering the first six months free with additional six months to retailers for recommending suppliers to us. Then suppliers get first three months free as $99 per month. Our customer acquisition plan, we tend to use um, search engine optimization on our website. We tend to use um, social media sites like LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter to onboard customers. We currently own about 40% market share in the Nigeria retail sector and about 30% market share in the hospitality industry. Our team includes myself, Steve Chikuzo, and Jacob. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Timothy, uh, for that presentation. So we are going to finish up with Amir here. So I think Sayed probably is not able to connect at this point. Uh, so, Amir, if you can enter to the room, this is going to be the last speech uh, today. And guys, you can uh, help us to decide who has the best speech of today. So, uh, you know, that, that will be the result at the end. Amir, it's your Hello. Day. Good afternoon. Let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, it's getting there. Now we can see it. Go ahead. Okay, great. Hello, I'm Amir, CEO and founder of Pocket Clinic. We are presenting the next generation of smart injector. Did you know that one in 11 people among us suffer from a chronic disease called diabetes? This means around half a billion people in the world. Life of 10% of them depends on a drug called insulin, although this is a lifesaver and keep them alive, but it's not an easy drug to administer. It causes overdose or underdose due to the poor management. And still in this modern time, most of them are injecting it manually. You may ask yourself, it should be a better way. There is. This is the newest technology that market offers. It's a piece of hospital equipment, which is very complicated, expensive, does not have a consumer-centric design. Mostly fun, one fits all solution. They need to carry it all day long. Technology has revolutionized our world and daily lives. It has become the greatest multitasking enabler. This is our goal, living where real people live, which is a smartphone. Our solution is not a mobile app. It's a consumer medical device that can be controlled with a smartphone. It doesn't need to be held. It's waterproof, stick onto the skin, and barely recognizable under your clothes. It's the smallest pump in the market, easy to use at the same cost of multi-daily injections. We use AI system to optimize and personalize the insulin dosing while delivering updates to family members and caregivers. To construct and validate our patented smart injectors, we have been collaborating with one of the biggest science and technology park in Asia and the biggest hospital in Latin America. MEMS technology has been utilized in these solutions, which gives us ability to reduce significantly in size and price. These smart injector consist of two parts. Main part, which is durable, rechargeable, secure, and reliable. Second part is a cartridge with different capacity. We use four millimeter height micro needle to minimize pain and improve patient compliance. Also single button press for insertion, make it easy to use. We believe dealing with chronic conditions is not just managing medications. Therefore, we build a community of people discussing their chronic health conditions, treatments and diets. Besides that, we offer 24 seven support from expert team of nutritionists, psychologists and physical training instructors. We are apt to make sure the treatments are good for the whole individuals with variable lifestyles. 
With our business model, we are able to reduce the upfront investment, also subs, uh, monthly subscription fee, make it uh, affordable for all income classes, even without insurance coverage. Besides being easy to use, pain-free with multiple applications, we are also differentiate ourselves on two main dimensions, interoperability and price, which makes us unique in this field. Global market for insulin delivery devices valued 35 billion by 2026. In North America specifically, we'll reach to 80 uh, billion. And we are targeting children and teenagers, also elderly peoples that have challenging to manage their chronic disease. Our team is divided in sectors of engineering, medicine, and management. Our engineer team has a various background in biomedical, electronic, and mechanical engineering with more than 10 years experience in this field. And our medical team has more than 14 years experience in type 1 diabetes. That makes us expert in our market. And at the end, diabetes don't choose their disease. Don't they deserve to choose their treatment? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Amir. And those were wonderful pitches from all of the startups. So you have a really hard selection, guys, uh, if you can help us to select who has the best pitch of today. But uh, we need to fasten uh, another conversation. I'm asking now, uh, you know, Marcos, um, Omar, and Diego. Diego, if you can, if you hear me, if you can just uh, share audio and video, uh, we can start here our conversation. There we go. Uh, so, guys, I hope that, uh, you know, so far you were seeing our companies and their pitches. This is a phase two of the program. I hope that that you have also your favorites. <laughs> but thank you for being here today. Uh, so I would like to first uh, ask you to start with a short introduction about yourself. I will uh, start with Marcos. Marcos, can you introduce yourself? Yes. Hello. Hello, everybody. Well, um, I'm Marcos Romero from Argentina, Buenos Aires City. I'm the founder of Startup Global, uh, focused on digital transformation for the oil and gas industry and on developing some uh, innovation um, parts for the different municipalities. Um, so it's great to be here, Miriam. Thank you very much um, to invite me and to give me the opportunity to stay here. So everybody, thank hello, Diego. So hello, Omar. Uh, Omar, I will continue with you. Can you introduce yourself? Sure, why not? Uh, thank you for, the, for inviting me, first of all. Um, my name is Omar Sadun. I'm software engineer, um, CEO of InMind Software, uh, mobile and blockchain development company, and also uh, part of the board uh, and the VP of startups at the CUTI, the IT chambers here in Uruguay. Um, and well, that, that's it. Okay, thank you, Omar. And Diego, my friend, nice to see you. Can you hey, introduce Miriam. yourself? <laughs> Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Diego Civils. I'm the founder of uh, a company called Kona um, that we specialize in virtual assistance for uh, fintech and banks, which the company was acquired this year by a company called Technicis uh, in March. So I now lead the um, conversational banking uh, products, which means all our products are now part of Technicis and uh, I'm the head of conversational banking at Technicis right now. Perfect, guys. Thank you so much. So we are going to start with uh, some of the questions that uh, you know we're, we're discussing before. Uh, so you see that we have a new white paper about Argentina and Uruguay, and many things probably changed uh, during the pandemic. Um, so I would like to ask you, uh, what are the new technology trends that you see in Argentina and Uruguay markets raising during the pandemic? So I'm going to start with Diego and then Omar and then Marcos can uh, give me the last uh, thoughts. Uh, Diego, go ahead. All right. Um, so I can speak on the uh, fintech and, and bank industry for sure, uh, which is where, where you know my focus is right now. So, you know, we... we when we started with the COVID thing, uh, obviously we all turned into remoting and video calls, right? Um, so banks closed the branches and people weren't able to go to the branch. So people were needed uh, to use a digital tool to provide banking services, right? To, to be able to do banking. Uh, so from one day to another, banks needed to you know, make all these people digital users. So that was a big challenge. Uh, so in, in that period, um, Actually, virtual assistants helped a lot trying to solve some self-service issues like, you know, 
uh, what's my balance? How do I apply for a loan? How do I apply for a mortgage? Uh, can I get a new credit card? Uh, so all those questions uh, were now being able to be responded by you know AI. So one of the things that I saw that grew you know exponentially was uh, you know using AI for self service support. In our case, virtual assistants. So that was one of the key you know roles that our product actually played in that uh, phase. And then uh, the video call, obviously, all, I mean, this that we are doing right now, um, you know, Zoom, uh, Google Meet and Teams, uh, you know, everybody went into video calling. So now video call is part of our, you know, uh, experience that you expect to have with a, a financial industry like a bank or a, uh, or a credit union. So those two technologies are, are, are huge. And, you know, within the uh, fintech uh and, and you know latam is a huge opportunity for fintech because there are a lot of people that are they don't use banks uh, still so a lot of these companies are uh, appearing all every day uh trying to capitalize on that opportunity so uh those two things are are extremely interesting and, and, and you know and growing exponentially uh, so i think you know i would say those two trends in technology you know like ai for for customer support and, and video calling for a much more experienced, uh, uh, engaging experience for fintech and you know banks. That's my take. Okay, perfect, and that's that's totally true. Fintech certainly took a really uh, good hit for for this pandemic. Omar, what is your, your perception? <clears throat> well, I have two two two, two thoughts here. Uh, in a general way, I think we all experienced that e-commerce in general boosted like a lot like even myself before covid i was a regular user of e-commerce services buying from my house getting stuff to my house um but since covid it was like the rule i don't i don't even go anymore to the supermarket well, in fact it's my wife she, she she goes sometimes to time but at some point we, we were buying everything online so that brought a lot of challenges to a lot of people because they were used to that and they needed solutions. Even I don't, I don't sell any e-commerce, but that, this is what I saw like a general um, and, and, and the biggest growth that, lead, that led to all the technologies to be needed, like AI, uh, you know, like, okay, now I, I, I have more customers. I need to handle more requests from my customer. How I deal with this, I need to, it's not only about having my e-commerce store, but it's also how I handle it, how I handle the volume, how, how I prepare myself to, to, to manage my stock. So that, that bleeded in a different, in different other technologies, more, more niche technologies. And that's, that's one of the points I also saw a bigger demand in my business, my specific business of blockchain, uh, when also combined with all those things about health passes, you know, verify identity, um, allow people you know to verify where they were where they weren't and stuff like that so i saw a lot of demand in that way um, not as easy to, to to make because at least on the mobile world where i have a food um it's not like everybody can create their own health pass for apple or google uh, apps you need them to allow you or you need to be on the government or you need to have a health tech and uh, stuff like that but those, those are like a general thing I saw uh, for everybody and, and also in particular in our business. I will say that everybody that was in technology at that time uh, saw a huge amount of changes. Of course, there is a, a bad part of this story. Um, I, I had customers that were around events, uh, tourism, and they, they saw their business like going quite bad at that moment. Even being as a technological solution. But um, overall, I think e-commerce was one of the, of the biggest uh, hits on, on during the pandemic. That's true. And we saw that also in the other countries, like e-commerce also took a really good hit, uh, you know, into the market. Marcos, what is your perception in Argentina? Like, uh, what was the trend in there during the pandemic? Well, I mean, my perception is uh, almost the same as um, as them that that w what they are saying before. Uruguay and Argentina, is, we are very close. So, so what happens there? It happens here in, in general. I mean, but of course that that the winners 
here in Argentina, those startups that become unicorns during the last year and a half, that was amazing because it's not a common thing that seven startups become unicorns in one year and a half. But um, going the same line uh, of, of my teammates here, um, it's like a remote work. Those who um, have been working, uh, facilitating and accelerating and improving the experience of the users in the remote work, they were the winners. Here in Argentina, Murali was one of the uh, startups that become um, unicorns, but they have been working for 10 years on this. Of course, I'm totally agree with them. Um, online sales, e-commerce, of course, that, that, that's why uh, Tienda Nube um, and Walla are two uh, new unicorns that were startups. That 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 the main um, the main um, business of them is is uh, the e-commerce and cy cybersecurity. I think is a new trend also because that uh, all that the traction and interaction that uh, from users to companies, from companies to users, uh, from corporate and uh, to to SMEs, I mean, that transaction, there were many transactions, so the cybersecurity, I think, that were, um, was one of the main stones of, of the uh, tech startups here in, in Argentina and in the region, I think. Uh, here, uh, Autocero was another uh, tech company that became a unicorn that sell their company to American company on March of this year and was about service security. I think that, and of course, blockchain and internet are artificial intelligence are very, very important um, platforms and tools to improve other verticals. So, so I think that there, there were the, the opportunity and the trends. And of course, that the region, the region Latin America is once again in the radar of the risk funds. And that in combination with a lot of liquid world with low prices in the United States were conditions that helps also, I think, Argentina and Uruguay to, to have new startup tech startups. That's true. And, uh, you know, with a lot of funding going to Latin America that in many years uh, was not happening and now it's happening. So that's that was very important. Marcos, uh, continuing with you, what what type of startups do you think the ecosystem in Argentina will need? After the pandemic? Yes, forward? well, after the pandemic, I mean, um, here, here, the startups, um, I mean, of course, local startups, it's like um, they've been specialists to navigate chaos, you know, they are specialists in finding answer to complex problems. Um, because we are, this is our current situation. This is our common situation in, in this country. Um, so, and then today we are living in a global um, world of chaos, of changing. So the reinvention, they need to reinvent the, um, those companies, those business model is something that the startups needs. Of course, that we have uh, uh, our startup ecosystem used to suffer that. So they, they they are very flexible to adapt in these kind of situations. Um, but but digital transformation, I think that it's something, it's not a process, it's a, like a the new way of interact, it's the new way of trade, it's the new way of our behavior. So I think that everybody have uh, need to have um, a digital mindset, um, a global mindset, collaboration, there are no boundaries right now. I mean, the collaboration is a, is an opportunity right now, as we are talking here, but I think that the, the, the whole region and the whole world, it's a, it's a market opportunity. So, so the mindset must be digital, flexible, and global from a point of view. Um, and of course, there could be a, a other assets, but I think most of them uh, must be there. Okay, perfect. Uh, Omar, what is your perception in that area? What type of startups Uruguay uh, needs, you know, uh, going forward? Yeah, well, grabbing some some of the work from from Marcos, uh, this digital transformation that we we, we were witnessing um, is asking and begging for more specific knowledge. Now, uh, let's say now we have people working from home. Okay, so. That's great, but it has all the challenges, cybersecurity, how, how we are handling the information of my company, how we are managing the messaging, you know? So now I have a bigger need than before in cybersecurity because I need to protect my stuff at my company, but also outside my company. So 
I'm, I'm having different needs uh, and more specific needs. Uh, happens with everything is happening around blockchain, NFTs, cryptocurrencies, and, and, and everything around that. Um, people also need to be protected. Uh, or than just the don't trust verify story. Uh, well, people is is playing with that. People is buying NFT, so they they need. So I think all around cybersecurity is going to be uh, highly needed. Uh, but in general, everything that is more niche this, uh, down the digital transformation in general is going to be needed. So bigger big opportunities, a lot of opportunities, <clears throat> but also that different mindset uh, on trying to understand a smaller problem, but much more complex than before. It's not just about having a website anymore. Uh, it's much more. Yeah, yeah no, that's totally uh, true. And I it guess is. for startups, it's also going to be more challenging to get the attention of people now because it's, it's getting really hard. So Diego, what is your take on that? Because you had a startup, you are, are successful right now in an exit strategy and all that. What type of startups do you think uh, you know the sector will need the the country? Yeah, uh, I think I'm I'm very much aligned with Omar on the cybersecurity thing. I, I see uh, you know banks and fintechs needing this kind of uh, infrastructure in place because, uh, as also Omar was saying and Marcos, the e-commerce uh, exploded here in the in the pandemic. So now we are all used to order everything online. Uh, so. You don't need to go to a supermarket anymore. You don't need to go to anywhere to buy things. You are buying everything online. So that means you will need, you know, much better security uh, to prevent, you know, fraud, etc. And also, you you need a first class uh, customer support for all these, uh, you know, shopping that you're doing online. So, no, we 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 do have the the Amazon.com idea of what uh, e-commerce should look like and should behave. So there's a huge opportunity here in entrepreneurs that I've been talking to that they want to launch their own shops online, but they don't have their uh, the infrastructure or the knowledge for you know preventing fraud, uh, you know, storing credit cards, uh, being able to deliver goods across the country or across Latin America. So there's a huge opportunity on providing these specific niche services so entrepreneurs can launch their businesses online. Um, be it e-commerce or be it anything that you can sell online, other goods or services. Uh, but that means you, you do require a specific set of security policies, cybersecurity. You do require uh, customer support 24-7, which you can't do when you are on your own within a startup. So you can't be all day long responding to messages. So that's where AI comes in to help you do that. Um, so logistics, uh, cybersecurity, customer support, all that to help entrepreneurs to launch their businesses online. So I think, you know, huge opportunity there for uh, yeah. entrepreneurs here. Yeah. So Diego, and you are one of those that, you know, you actually experienced the startup ecosystem here in Toronto. Uh, you know, going forward, how you see uh, Canada and, and Uruguay and Argentina collaborating in anything or making alignments in anything like in your experience, what how will be the best for Canadian and Uruguayans or Argentina startups to to start to collaborate each other or the ecosystem? Well, I've always, uh, you know, when when I was there with you and doing the program, I remember, um, you know, being told that Canada is the 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 the, the entrance to North America, um, right, to, to to expand our businesses, and it was actually, uh, and we we did it that way through Toronto, right. Um, and I think that first months in Toronto, uh, you know, in my case, I'm just talking, you know, because of my experience there, um, it allowed us to narrow and to focus exactly on our value proposition instead of just doing a little things. Uh, we, we, we needed to take a decision on that we were going to, against banks and against the fintech industry, not just doing virtual assistance, but you know, being experts at banking virtual assistance uh, and being super clear about our objective, uh, you know, changed the entire pitch on, on on how I pitched the company by by that time. So I think Canada and Uruguay are very similar in so many things, and you've been here as well in Uruguay, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, from a, a, a doing business, uh, you know, standpoint, but the way Canada does it is 
much simpler in, in many cases and much down to the numbers and much down to what are you good at and and, and focusing on specific um you know either task product or service um so i think canada and europe are very similar in that way so they can really collaborate and, and we can learn <coughs> a lot from canada and canada also can learn a lot from us because you know we are used to do a lot of things with less and that's something that is very, very useful when, when you travel abroad and try to, you know, open your branch in Canada with a little resources. So there's a huge, um, uh, you know, mindset collaboration that can happen between the, the two countries. Um, yeah, so I think that's, you know, in my, in my experience, it's, 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 it's yeah. Yeah, Marcus, <laughs> yeah. you want to say something, Marcus? <laughs> it's three o'clock. Sorry. Yeah. Was my computer? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so oh, I'm not sure, uh, Omar or Marcos, do you want to expand on that? I'm not sure how much you know about the ecosystem, but how you know from uh, Omar, you you work with a government organization, so you you probably have an idea from government perspective. Uh, you know how do you think that the uh, that the ecosystem can collaborate? Well, it's, it's not a government, it's, it's more a private institution, but well, we, 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 gather, we gather all the, all the software and IT companies uh, here in Uruguay. And what we see is part of what Diego was saying uh, about, um, well, being small, trying to solve everything uh, with less resources. So we, 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 we have a very good idea on, on how to, to handle that. Uh, but also it's part of our challenges. We have great talent. We have uh, a great mindset that is being changed. We are thinking more and more about business instead of just, okay, laboring, like, okay, let's, let's work more hours. And instead of thinking in a specific business niche or business solution, uh, that's why we are seeing more and more startups. Uh, but now we need, we need to bring those startups and bridge them with venture capital, with risk capital. And that's part of the, the biggest challenge I think we, we have, but also the experience, because it's not just about grabbing some funds and try to execute. It's also having uh, transferred the knowledge and the experience and the culture. Um, so I think all that package is something we, we could be working very much and taking both countries a bigger advantage. Yeah. So. In, in talking about that, Marcos, uh, you have a community of startups and you are actually, uh, you know, helping them also, same as our organization, you know, to uh, realize what is the potential and all that. How do you see a potential collaboration with other similar organizations as, as your organization in Argentina with, uh, you know, Canadian organizations? Yeah, well, first, I think that these kind of spaces are very important to interact with other organizations from Canada, also from Uruguay. Of course, Argentina and Uruguay our natural um, uh, partners, because there are a lot of um, economic, for example, opportunities right now in Uruguay, so the talent relocate to Uruguay to start their own startup, or there are some Uruguay, uh, Uruguay startup that came to Argentina to look for talent to grow their, their business. So, but the thing is here is that uh, maybe there, uh, the, the opportunities um, to exist much more of these events in order to have a better interaction and a, a very rich interaction with, with Canadian startup ecosystem. But I think that both countries, I think that the three countries, we share some, some, um, some challenges. Um, I think that the three countries are um, agriculture-based economic countries in general. So there are some, the agri-tech, there are startups that, key, there are startup uh, technology startups that can add value to those um challenges uh, and known problems that the agricultural economy is uh, changing right now. Uh, all about um, uh, how can become sustainable that agricultural economy. Of course, about the industry and uh, how can the mining became much more sustainable and how can the industry with a net zero mining strategy, clean energies like hydrogen, uh, hydrogen. So I think that clean energy, uh, mining industry, agriculture industry are industries that the three countries are involved in some way. So I think that we can work together in, in, in those verticals. But of course, that talking about, um, for example, future of work, I mean, there are a lot of funds that are looking for those startups that 
trying to solve how the corporate um, segment are um, finding the best way to keep their talent in their corporate companies or attract new talent. So future of work, wellness, mental health are new like verticals that those startups who start to add value in that ecosystem or try to solve the in the best way those problems or challenges in that verticals are, are very interesting to work together in, in those fields also. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we have another two questions and then we can probably finish there and have a good networking with people here. Maybe you guys can also help us to decide who's going to be the best pitch today. <laughs> but uh, in the, the last two questions are more like a, an, an advice and a takeaway from uh, you know the pandemic. First, an advice. If a Canadian startup that is listening right now and they are looking for, uh, you know, expanding business right now in Argentina, uh, Marcos, what will be your best advice for that company, what they need to do or know about Argentina before they are making the move? Great. I think from a bunch of you, the best, the best first step is find a partner. I mean, a partner that, have, uh, that could facilitate that startup to enter in the whole business culture here in Argentina and to present that startup um, to the key players in the startup ecosystem here in Argentina because it's huge. So you need that kind of partnership. And uh, on the other thing, uh, on, the other, um, on the other hand, I need that also make a very good research before a landing here. I mean, um, and also try to figure out in which fields are investing the VCs here in, here in Argentina or there are a lot of VCs from the United States or from other parts of the world that are investing here. Well, okay, which are the fields that are investing here? So just in order to understand the behavior here of the innovation ecosystem and how are the policies, how are the taxes, how are everything here? Because there are some bureaucracy here. But if you find the, the right partner, it's, it's very easy and you can go to like a fast track there. And also for the Canadians, be flexible you know a latin american culture is quite different from from canada so try to be open and and, and flexibly in, in some way um and also it could be better i mean here most of the tech ecosystem could speak in english okay and understand english but it could be in order to have a good and a better engagement it could be good to if if they learn Spanish before came here in some some years or sometimes take a course of that, that because speak Spanish okay is part of the engagement of the engagement strategy that from a bunch of it could be useful. Uh, what will be uh, your recommendation, Omar, for those that are looking at the Uruguayan uh, market? Well, there, there is a couple. Um, as a small country and, and having a, I would say a lot of immigration we are quite used to welcome people uh, you know welcome different companies well so we, we build some soft landing programs and, and and also some concept about testing in uruguay um, that will help from startups to, to bigger companies but uh, the idea behind that is small country uh, clear rules um, good living good way of living uh, and good price even if we complain and, and all of that um so they, they they can they can start and they can try whatever they are doing or whatever they are building uh, in a good ambience secure and, and etc uh, also i would say we are known by welcoming people like we, we like people and we are nice so uh, of course like everything that marco said uh, having a good research, knowing where you are going, where you are going to, to be staying, where you are going to be funding your company. But usually, uh, Uruguay in particular has um, welcomes very well and, and with very and attractive um, rules to foreign companies, startups especially. Thank you, Omar. So, Diego, you have that duality, you know both. What will be your best recommendation for a startup that is entering to Uruguay right now? Yeah, so having been on the on you know the other way around from Uruguay to Canada, I learned a lot about you know Canada's culture and the difference between Uruguay and Canada. Uh, so first of all, is expect a different culture within you know business wise and outside the business. 
there's a different set of rules that we, we play uh, with, but they're not so different. Once you learn those, and once you, once you learn the etiquette on, 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 on meetings and, and PowerPoints or, or, or slides, uh, you know, stick to data, stick to what, why this is good, why this is better than the competition, things that we are not that used to do here in Latin America. Uh, that changed my mindset a lot when I was there. So coming back to Uruguay, like expect a cultural change and cultural, you know, differences that you might need to adapt to. So it's not hard, just ex expect that. Uh, and then do, do your research, exactly. Um, you know, it's not the same volumes of, of, of you know, money or, or uh, capital raising. Now it is, you know, exploding here in LATAM, obviously, but... When I was there, it wasn't. I mean, the money was in Silicon Valley and and, and only there. Uh, now there's a lot of VC coming here into um, LATAM. So, uh, you know, do your research, expect some culture. There's no shocks, but changes that you might need to adapt to. Uh, and find a partner, obviously, like Marco said. Uh, find people like Kuti guys uh, that they help a lot of companies to get them into the ecosystem of uh, partners and and companies alike or mindsets alike that might help you uh, on the onboarding process, like, the, like on the soft landing process. Uh, don't do it by yourself. Find someone here that can help you, you know, uh, you know, transit this, this uh, first months at least uh, while I'm here. Yeah, perfect. So we are getting to the end of the, uh, you know, this panel. Thank you so much, uh, guys, for being here today. Last question, very short. And I'm going to start with Diego because he knows the 30 seconds kind of <laughs> last, last pitch. Uh, what is your biggest takeaway from the pandemic? Uh, that's the last thing. Uh, <laughs> what could um, you share with us? <laughs> my biggest takeaway from this pandemic uh, and is that how awesome is that we can adapt to almost anything. Uh, like we changed the scenario from one day to another and, and we made it work, right? Uh, with what we had. So, I mean, that's my takeaway. Perfect. How awesome is that we can adapt to this. Okay. Omar, what is your biggest takeaway from the pandemic? Well, mainly that nothing is forever. Uh, so always be ready uh, to change and, and adapt. And, and also that right now, every, every, every opportunity in the world is one Zoom call away. And so that changed it quite a bit. Challenge, but also opportunity. Right. And uh, Marcos, your last words? Yeah. Well, similar to Omar, be present, take the opportunities. Um, don't think too much about the future, but because you never know. And be totally be flexible to adapt to that future that it changes every month, maybe. So that's it. Okay, perfect, guys. I hope that, uh, you know, you all three uh, enjoy the networking later. If you can send the networking or help us to decide who is going to be the best pitch uh, of today. And uh, for the audience, please uh, go to networking now. Uh, you can meet each other. You can maybe have conversations. And uh, uh, for everyone else, uh, you know, just uh, try to go to the website, download the white paper and get to know Argentina and Uruguay so you can have a great experience expanding business there. Thank you so much for your attention and have an amazing, amazing day. Bye. Okay. Bye, Omar. Bye, Miriam. Thank you very much. Pleasure.